Hello, this is Christoph from Click, and I'm back with a video on a very hot topic Click Sense Enterprise on Kubernetes. And this time we will install together on a Minikube installation, which is suitable on a local computer. And I'm using, in my case, a Windows 10 PC and um, VirtualBox, which is uh, a free hypervisor software. And I will also use Vagrant to provision it. So if you go to my GitHub page, I put the prerequisites again there. Let's go and download Vagrant. Let's get the latest Windows 64 bits version for that purpose. And um, when you start the installer, it asks for the home directory, the folder, leave that destination as it suggests on C HashiCorp. Don't change it to somewhere else. Then install it. It's gonna take two minutes and it also takes a reboot. So while we wait for this, let's go back to GitHub and actually grab and download the whole folder as a zip and extract that Vagrant provisioning folder to some place on your documents, wherever you like to. So now the restart has to take place because of Vagrant. And when I'm back, um, open command prompt, go to that folder we just created and just type Vagrant up. Now you see on the right that actually a folder .vagrant gets created and it starts pulling an Ubuntu image for you from the internet, which will take some time. So I'm fast forwarding this to make this not too boring. And it starts actually creating the whole cluster for you. So it's installing on a new machine, which you can see now in VirtualBox that is it's up and running. Um, it will install Docker, it will install Docker machine, Minikube and Cube Control, Kubelet, and finally Helm. So when you read Happy Helming, that provisioning part is ready and you have a greenfield working Minikube. And I stopped here intentionally because I want you to do the next steps together with me. So you can shortcut this and just execute click.sh file with bash, but let's do that actually together and see what the steps are that it takes to run ClickSense in Kubernetes. This is in any other Kubernetes cluster exactly the same. First of all, let's get a prompt, uh, a bash using Vagrant SSH, and now I'm in Linux. So I can do LS and all Linux stuff. I'm no longer in Windows. So um, let's start installing the first provider, which is NSF. Uh, yeah, and it tells me actually that Helm hasn't been updated. So um, by the time you repeat this, I will put this into um, the GitHub so you can see that. So first we do Helm init. Now it installs the Tillapot in the Kubernetes cluster and I do Helm upgrade, init upgrade. And now I can actually uh, do the repo update. So it gets the latest uh, and greatest charts that are available. The cluster is still empty. So if I do Helm list, there's nothing. If I do Helm repo list, I have only the default Kubernetes charts location. So now I can pull from the stable uh, chart, an NFS client provider, and NFS stands for Network File System, and that is going to be my persistence layer for files coming uh, um, written from the cluster. And um, it can you can see now that is our first deployment. NFS is now running. The next one is a persistent volume claim that is going to be used by all the next installations and deployments. And one thing you, uh, you should know is actually we have a synced folder. So whatever is in your file subfolder, all those YAML files, you can also execute in Linux under slash vagrant files. So that storage class, for example, is exactly the file you have here. And you can, if you want to make modifications, you can use your preferred editor on Windows and not uh, Vim or anything in Unix. So here is the persistent volume claim. It has two, one for Mongo, one for files. 
and the next thing is to deploy Mongo also from the Kubernetes stable repo. So if I do kube control get pods now, I see two of them. One is still creating that will take a few moments to pull that image from um, the repo. Let's have a look what the definition says, which we just deployed. Here is the database name, here is the password and um, the claim that it's going to use to persist it. So now let's add click sense um, the stable repo we deploy on bintray.com. So we have to add this bintray repo in order to um, deploy from that repository. And now we start with clicksense init. Clicksense init you need to do once for the cluster. So it leaves a lot of definitions behind so that the final command, which we are going to do now, is to install clicksense. It has already lots of settings in the back because of that init. So what we have to provide for 40 plus services is comparingly small amount of information. Here is the MongoDB, for example. Here are the persistent volume claims. That's really down to the necessary. This is only what uh, Click cannot guess. And we are also using the built-in um, authentication, which is a mock page for uh, if you don't have an IDP configured, an identity provider. <clears throat> now the last command Helm install, click stable, click sense. This will take a while, so I'm really fast forwarding now, um, much faster than in real life. So you can tell here, uh, five minutes later, some of these um, containers start to be running, the others are still creating, now 10 minutes later, and so on. Eventually, more and more containers <coughs> will come alive. And this took me almost uh, 25 minutes. And then I realized actually one of the containers gave up. How could I find out? It was the click engine in this case. Um, I looked into the log and to get to the log of one of these containers, you have to actually copy paste the ID that is an arbitrary one and go cube CTL logs and that ID. And then I, saw that actually it says it shut down. So what I can do to heal it is actually remove the engine. It will come up with a new one and then it will go through. Deleting an, an pod actually causes Kubernetes to recreate it because the deployment object is still there in the backend and it's going to uh, just create a new one. So let's get the list of pods again and it will see that a new engine has been started just a few seconds ago. That means now everything is running and we are set and we just need to fix one thing in the host file of the Windows computer because I must speak to that page uh, with a URL click.example. We have to go to this place, Windows System32 drivers etc and edit the host file. So that particular address that my machine has, remember that's the vagrant setting that we had first, uh, needs to be elastic.example. 